Hey there, it's Brittany and I'm back with a tutorial or at least a bead with me. I think we're gonna make something out of the stuff that's in this bag today. One of the things I used to do is just put a bunch of beads I liked um, together in a bag and set it aside. And I grabbed a bunch of those when I was packing to set aside for my apartment so I could make some jewelry out of some beads that I had grouped together months and months ago. So I did a video where I patinaed this pendant, this African brass pendant. Um, check that out. I will try and remember to leave a link to it in the description of this video, but this is all patina. I did not paint this. That is natural patina from, well, it's not natural, but it's from um, chemicals instead of paint. So I was really excited that we got that beautiful um, blue and green to bloom on that pendant. Um, so we patinaed that. If you want that uh, tutorial, it's out there. And then I have some African glass. This is like a smoky gray black. It is not, it's kind of showing up black on the screen, but it is gray black. Um, these are ceramic. Aren't those so cool? I just love that um, pattern. I might need that. I don't remember. I think I got these at Bernie's Beads in, um, I can't remember if they're in Mesa or Gilbert, but. Um, I think that's where I got these and they were a little pricey if that's where I got them but they're beautiful I kind of want this print in my new house and then I got these from Lori Matson. they're horn beads with some brass detail I eventually got a couple more strands of these from Chelsea's beads I don't think they have any more now and then um, what else do we have in this bag? I just have a random strand of magnesite. I'm pretty sure I got these a long time ago in a mix from Fire Mountain Gems. And I mean like five plus years ago. And then um, these I think came from Al's Silver Downtown Phoenix. Um, so I'm really excited. The shape is just amazing. I, I don't, I'm just so excited. I'm gonna bust out some, probably some brass beads to play off the brass and the focal. It's not gonna be rocket science with this one or brain surgery or uh, my funny one, the funny one is rocket surgery. Uh, with this one, I'm not, I haven't been in the complicated mood. I think you can pull off high impacts with, uh, high impact with easy style using the right beads. So obviously this is gonna be at the forefront um, we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to see if I can grab some cool spacers. All right. So I did not bring a lot of spacers. I brought like one small baggie of different colors. I don't know. I think I was at, at that point I was just tired, but these are really cool. I got these from, um, Beauty and the Bead Shop and then these in a haul once. So we'll see how these work out. I got out some one millimeter Gypsy Sippa leather. I think this will be nice. Um, looks like should work. I might, I might have a problem with the stone beads. Sometimes those can be drilled too small. And if so, then we're gonna have to just go with um, wax linen or beading wire because um, I really, I do want the stone in here, but let's see if we can find some that are See, we're getting stuck like halfway through the bead. And I just don't want to fight with my beads the entire necklace, which happens sometimes. I want, like I said at the beginning, I want this to be easy peasy lemon squeezy, right? Yeah. Yeah, I knew that was going to be an issue. So we'll save the gypsy sip buff for another time. All right, before I move to beading wire, I do have some waxed linen. I think this is, oh uh, yeah, this is two ply. That's gonna be too taxing. Now this is four ply. It's a teal, but I think it works. And we might still have that same issue that we just had with the leather, but let's see if we can get it to scooch through these beads. Aha, we can. So I think we're gonna go with wax linen. I am gonna like, the way it drapes a little bit better with this necklace and it, it goes well that color well, wow I wasn't even when I packed I only packed a couple of these colors so um, I'm very excited that it worked out all right so 
I'm going to cut everything open and just start placing. I might not talk. I might voice over this part because I don't know what I'm thinking. One of the things that I might do once I move into the new house, I just noticed I have way too much jewelry that I don't wear and I know I won't wear it. So I'm going to decide what gets donated, what gets sold, and then what I'm just going to take apart and put the beads back in my um, my stash because it's just so much jewelry. There's just so much. So, And then what will be put in cold storage because it's kind of out of style right now, but I don't ever want to give up. Like all my bubble necklaces from the 2010s. <laughs> I'm still counting on those coming back. <laughs> all right. Um, okay. So let's see. I'm not really stringing yet. I just kind of want to see what this will look like up against the pendant. So moving was traumatizing. The The move itself was fine, um, but the, da the movers damaged the house and it almost came to the point that we weren't going to close on time. They damaged the house two days before closing and one day before the buyers were going to do a final walkthrough. Um, I don't know how I did it. It was almost, I was telling my friends, it's like I was in the movie Ocean's Eleven but I got everything fixed literally 30 minutes before they were going to walk in the house. They knew about the damages, um, but they gave me enough time to get a drywaller out. They, um, the, the movers um, knocked a huge dent into the wall of uh, a windowsill, like knocked a corner off. It was crazy. Was the damage was not just, you know, incidental, oh, we scuffed the wall. No, they like took a chunk out of the wall. And one of them, when he was disconnecting the washer, um, didn't do it correctly. And he ripped out the plastic pan, um, didn't tell me. And hours later I came back and there was an issue. Um, and thankfully my, I had a, I have a drywaller who came and rebuilt the wall that I turned, tore down in the house. Um, and he was able to come out that morning. It was just like an emergency. He came out, fixed it, fixed a couple other things that they f had broken. Um, thankfully, the builder or the, the movers um, paid for all the damages, but I, I did end up having a panic attack and I've never had one of those. My friend had to calm me down over the phone and send their husband over to help me with the house because I couldn't, I was like at the point where I was so out of it like I could not function I couldn't like process what was happening so he came over helped me fix everything it, he was just a godsend so um, we closed on time uh, I, I I with the last three weeks had been working so hard on that home with packing fixing things you know cleaning the day after all of this happened I stayed until 11 p.m to get everything else out of the house, clean it top to bottom so that these people had a beautiful home to move into. Um, the next day, I couldn't move. I was so in so much pain. I have a, an issue that I'm not going to go on to here, but I was in a lot, a lot of pain. And um, it, like, my, it, was, it was crazy. It was crazy. Uh, my mom took care of Goldie for like basically 24 hours straight because I couldn't handle it myself. It was really bad. So I'm very relieved um, that I'm through with that home. I, I, I think that I was very lucky to, to live there for the time that I did, um, but I never really liked that house. I never really got along with that house and um, just so many things happened in it. And I'm very thankful that it helped me um, move out of my apartment and make enough money to buy this other new home that I'm very excited about. The thing is, I got a call last night at 1130 from the Phoenix police 
um, telling me that there was an accident and I was still listed as the owner on the home in the, as, uh, cause they looked for the water bill. There was nobody in the house. Um, a Ford F-150 had plowed into the house. Um, and it was no longer structurally sound. Um, and then it, the, the F-150 flipped and hit the house next to it as well. And I just was in shock because it's been a running thing thinking that that house was trying to keep me there. <laughs> like it just, it was just so crazy. It was just so crazy. And I couldn't believe that they were calling me when I didn't own it anymore to tell me that um, this had happened. Uh, I did end up giving them the names of the new buyers. They haven't moved in yet. It's they've only, as of the time that that happened, they had only been in the like owners for six days. Um, I did go over there this morning before work and it, it's the way it happened is the truck jumped the curb. It's crazy. It missed like trash cans, hit the front yard, took out a tree that was in my front yard when I lived there, hit the bottom right corner of the home. It turned on its side and then landed up against the house next door. Um, the house next door is structurally sound. Um, it just has a huge hole in it uh, and a bunch of cosmetic damage. Now, the house I used to own, I don't own it anymore, it's not mine, um, wasn't so lucky. It's got a smaller area of damage, but the area was the front corner, front bottom corner of the home. And it just, it's a stairwell. There was a closet under there. I'm guessing that there's a bunch of internal damage. It doesn't look great. Um, they can fix it. It's just depending on, hopefully they get the right people in there to fix it. I, I have to thank the universe that I got out, but I feel really terrible for the new buyers. I feel really bad for them. They were a cute little couple who had just bought their first home and that happened to them. So after the incident that happened last summer, I, I really needed to get out of there and I, I kind of have to put it out there that I just have to let the universe do what it's doing and it knows best, right? So um, thankfully, thankfully to all of your help and manifestation and everything out there, um, I, I'm no longer the owner of that house. But anyway, if you're still listening, thanks for making it this far. Um, I'm just kind of going with the flow here. I really like how this looks. I've been using those triangles between every single bead and I just am loving the texture. Um, I don't know. Now that I'm looking at it, that I love these two right there. I think I just, I like them here because I don't have a smaller bead. Oh, I have these black beads, but I kind of wanted the tur Oh, yeah, we might do that. Well, I can just, we'll just cut off a piece on this side. This isn't going to be a super long necklace, I don't think, but I will cut it pretty long. I think what I'm going to do here is oops sorry about that i'm gonna take these off put on a couple of these so excited if I get all four of the beads that I actually planned for this necklace into the necklace that's a win and I think I'm going to do the black beads up the back of the necklace I don't know if I'm, lo I'm loving these I don't know if I'm loving those so <clears throat> what I'm going to do is check it out see what it looks like up against the pendant hmm You know, I think I'm gonna go with the, just the flat ones 
and then we'll just save I mean I could push these off to the side or put them in the back of the necklace or something to take up some room I just want the really interesting beads to be in the front you know why not use the good beads <laughs> I know it's it's one of my new mottos it's it's hard for me because I, I love hoarding beads love collecting beads but use the good beads right always take your piece apart later if you don't like it um, and make something else okay Um, I did end up talking to a neighbor that coincidentally I never met, lived next door to him for two and a half years, never met him um, this morning when I went to check it out and he was so sweet. Um, he said he was in bed with his spouse and he was asleep and he thought, because it happened at 11, he thought it was thunder or that somebody might have been breaking in and it turned out that no, it was somebody hitting their house with an F-150. Um, the other thing is the guy of course left the vehicle there because it was on its side up against a home but he ran he ran they don't know if it was the owner of the vehicle they don't know um, really who was driving but there were there were blood spots on the the ground leading away from the accident so it's just I was I was a little bit of a mess last night because I was so emotional about how everything ended last week and just to, to be brought back into it and here um, I had some PTSD from the issue last year it just kind of brought all those feelings back and I was just so relieved that I didn't own it anymore but also just so sad just so sad you know anyway love this I love this okay so now we have the pendant okay I am loving it I don't know if I do I want two of the black beads there yeah I do and then um, I'm gonna do up the other side and then I'm just gonna do some of this the gray black beads up the back and then I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna finish it off okay she is strung um, I it's a much longer than I originally intended I wanted it to be a shorter necklace but the these beads ended up looking a little awkward around the curve of the back of my neck so I made it so these beads are what's curving around the back of my neck and it looks so pretty um, again, it's really simple design, but the um, the beads themselves make it complex. I did not get these beads or these beads into the design, but I'm totally okay with that. I got the, the coolest beads in there. <laughs> um, I'm just going to use this generic um, antique brass ch uh, clasp. Um, I, this is from Jesse James Beads. And then I have these. There's some clamshells or clots, whatever you want to call them, an antique brass. And that's how I'm going to finish off the back of the necklace. I'll show you how I use them. I don't know if you can hear it, but Goldie's over there drinking some water. I am just going to string one on. She must be really thirsty. And her she I don't know if I've ever told you guys this but she loves being under things and I specifically bought a couch in my old house that was too low for her to get under because when I lived in my other apartment before I built the last house she would just live under the couch um, so I bought a couch that she couldn't do that with well in this furnished apartment that we're in temporarily she, the couch is tall enough for her to go under so she's spending some time under there it's a little annoying but I'm letting her do it um, I might end up blocking the bottoms though if she's going under there too often um, but she is spending some time out so here I just tied I tied a knot 
at the end and we're probably going to do another knot just to make sure that that can't escape these are some heavy beads so um the wax linen is going to hold up it's just i want to make I, I don't want it to make i don't want to make it easy for something to to happen you know and these are not covers they cover knots so i'm going to go ahead and slide that in there you don't need any glue because the wax linen is going to hold it itself um, i'm going to snip here okay and then i'm just going to close that up with my fingies um, slide everything down towards that knot cover slowly i don't want i mean some of these beads they're glass beads they're in they're recycled glass beads they can have some sharp edges so i just want to be careful that i'm not abrading the wax linen um, or doing it the least i can Gonna keep moving everything down. It's kind of hard to do Lucy. Not. It's kind of hard to do it too tight with um, a fabric uh, cord like wax linen or um, eslon or something nylon because over time it's gonna stretch out. So I'm not too worried about it being loosey-goosey. It is loosey-goosey, but I don't need it to be too loosey-goosey. I know that's just a ridiculous sentence, but <laughs> it's true. Uh, I am going to make sure there aren't any noticeable gaps in my beads, which there were some. So I'm just gonna move everything down, everything down, and then I am going to, um, I think I did bring my knot tying pliers my knotting pliers with me. Here they are. These are by Beadalon. And I'm just going to tie a knot. But before I tie it tight, I am going to go in with my knotting pliers through that loop and hold on to the uh, string that's right up against that knot cover and pull that tight. Slide that down. Oh, making sure that it's not around the knot cover itself. That happens quite frequently. So just take the time to move that up. It's, it's not going to look good if that's tied around your knot cover. Oh no. Okay. So let's back that out a little bit. See, we're getting a gap here because um, I'm pulling it a little too tight in the wrong spot. So I'm just going to take my time. If you get frustrated, walk away so you can take a break. Go get a coffee. I don't drink coffee, but go get a tea. <laughs> go get some water. Chew some gum. All right, so I'm loosening it up very slowly. I'm going to pull that out a little bit, not totally undone. I'm just going to try and slip this up and over that loop. There we go. Slide down the knot cover and then come back through like I did before. Actually, I'm going to loosen this a little bit more. I'm leaving this in so you can problem solve without thinking like everybody else knows what they're doing all the time. They don't. I promise. I promise stuff gets edited out in these videos all the time so I'm going to undo it because I want to show you again what I was doing I just did a, posted another video from last year just posted it yesterday um, which had a similar problem but it was beat with beading cord so that I purposefully leave these things in just so you can see how to fix them so again we're gonna do it so that it doesn't get the knot cover and then I'm just gonna pull tight. Slide that down. And then what I'm gonna do is another knot, because we, did, as you remember, we did two on the other side as well. 
um, I'm just gonna go in and grab instead of just that string I'm gonna grab that knot that we just tied hold it actually I'll try and get under it if I can um, and then see it, it just naturally wants to go around that knot cover slip it out there we go We've got our double knot we'll slide it down we're gonna trim right there actually I'm gonna slide that down a little bit more I just want it to be a little tighter and then I'm gonna trim Close her up, and then I'm just going to get a jump ring and attach this to my clasp. Okay, and she is almost done. I'm so excited. I finally got to design a necklace using these beads. I see them. I used to see them in my bead room all the time because I left them in that bag out on a when we get to it someday cart. <laughs> and we got to it someday. Oh, it makes me so happy. These beads and these beads together are just beautiful. So I am going to obviously include some photos of it. But here it is, that stunning pendant moving into these stunning beads. Kind of want to make a bracelet now that I'm looking at it. And I, I have enough, do I have enough of the black beads? I don't think I do. Mm, you know, that'll be a project for future Brittany. I want it, what I want to do is a bracelet that mimics this. So these three in the middle, these two on the outside, and then these around the back, and I don't have enough with me um, to do that. That's not gonna be enough. So that'll be future Brittany's problem. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know what you think. And um, stay tuned for Goldie. I will link the tutorial to making this pendant. Have a good day, bye-bye. Cutie. Hi. Hi. Do you have your collar on and your harness? No. You know, we just have to go out with the harness on because we're at the apartment. We don't have a backyard right now. So, anyway. Hi, cutie. Everybody loves you. We need to get you a new collar. You're still wearing your Christmas collar. Yeah. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. We love you.